be with you. May you know. We want to welcome each and every one of you. Uh, we're going to use a word from time to time, or at least I will today. And that will be a, a very unifying word. Uh, in COVID today, we want to be around people that we, we know and connect with. And that becomes uh, much more intimate. And so I, I'll use a, a phrase from time to time, family. And to be fair with you, it's a family that's going to probably last uh, for this hour. But we're, we're united by the impact of a, a man in, in our lives. And so some of you are here by family connection. And some of you share the, the blood of either adoption and knowledge uh, or love and knowledge, uh, or actual DNA. So you're, you're family in one sense. Some of you are connected today, and you're part of the school. 28 years, Jim was a part of the school system here in Central Point, and what an impact he's had. Uh, those of you who are part of the church family and are watching, certainly Jim has had an impact with us and uh, you can't uh, imagine a Sunday as we see the, as we see the dulcimer here uh, that didn't have this barrel-chested, Santa Claus-like man uh, lead us in worship. And so to that, uh, we all have a unity today between and with one man, Jim Wally. We are here to pay tribute to him uh, I, want to, I want you to recognize today, uh, as, we, as we remember Jim, there'll be moments when we should laugh. It's appropriate. Uh, there is very few people within our community who can hit a grand slam home run emotionally like Jim Wally could. Correct? But you should shed a few tears. So along the way, as we remember him and we bring honor to him, we, we want to remember and, and thank the Lord for the impact that he provided. And then again, because Jim also represented a purpose in life, a, a Savior and a God in Jesus Christ, uh, we want to remember that incredible eternal connection that he made with his Savior and gives confidence that he is everlasting. So join me in a word of prayer as we begin today. And we are going to start with the one thing that we know Jim would have loved. Music. Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of being here today. Dear God, the, the privilege really is remembering a life well lived. We're saddened. To see it, it, it end as quick as it did, dear God, we appreciate the fact that a, a Savior took away the sting of death. And so, dear God in heaven, we'd ask that as we're here today, as we mourn today, there is also a sense of understanding the eternal connection. Father, I pray that you would, you would be with us and provide comfort. Start, especially, dear God, with Lori. Start especially with Emily. Provide in them a comfort. Dear God, I pray that you would be with them in every way. Allow us to honor Jim and more greatly honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I know many of you uh, knew Mr. Wally from school. He was your choir director. Uh, perhaps some of you joining us uh, online as well. So we're going to invite you to sing if you know these songs. We've got the words and the lyrics on the screen for you. So join in uh, with us as we sing some of the, the songs that, uh, that Mr. Wally taught me. Creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise Him, 
Alleluia. Thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam, oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. wind that art so strong, ye clouds that sail in heaven along, oh, praise Him, alleluia, thou rising moon in praise rejoice, ye lights of evening find a Creator bless and worship him in humbleness. Oh, praise him. Alleluia. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit, three in one. Sometimes the night was beautiful, sometimes the night was so far away, sometimes it seemed to stoop so close, you could touch it but your heart would break, sometimes the morning came too soon, sometimes the day could be so high. There was so much work left to do, so much you'd already done, oh God, to our my God, and I will ever praise you, oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you, I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn walk in your way, and step by step you lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. 
Sometimes I think of Abraham, how one star he saw had been lit just for me. He was a stranger in this land. I am that no less than he, and on this road to righteousness, sometimes the climb can be so steep. I may falter in my steps, Never beyond your reach, O oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your way and step. I will follow you all of my days, and I will follow you all of my days, and I will follow you all of my days, and step by step you lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Oh, sing a song of celebration, lift up a shout of praise, for the bridegroom will come, the glorious one, and oh, we will look on his face, we'll go to a much better song of the land. Would you guys stand with us? And dance with all your might. Lift up your hands and clap for joy. For the time drawing near When He will appear And oh, we will stand by His side A strong, no spotless bride Oh, we will dance on streets that are golden the glorious bride and the great son of man from every tongue and tribe and nation will join in the song of the land oh we will dance on the streets that are golden the glorious bride and the great son of man from every tongue and tribe and nation will join in the song of the Lamb, we'll join in the song of the Please be seated. You know, Emily said it best. You came into my office yesterday. 
and you said you couldn't run an errand without seeing at least three people that your dad knew and greeted him and he greeted them by name. Now here's the cool part about it. You didn't add, and I like that. Jim seemed to intuitively know that every one of us loved the sound of our names more than any other sound that we hear. Isn't that fair? And you know, the, the, the incredible thing about it is, is the pride that he has. You who are students here and are in the auditorium, you who are students who are, are watching today, he swelled with pride at your success. He loved to hear you. He loved to hear you achieve. And he found great joy in that. Uh, Jim was a monstrous presence when he walked into the room. He was five foot too few. But you and I know him as a seven foot tall man. He walked into a room and he owned the room. He had a smile as big as his face. A passion that could either light up a room, as we said a minute ago, but let's also be fair, we're not honoring a saint today. He could burn it down. That passion drove him. But one thing that you could never, ever say about Jim is that he was a quiet man. Except for one day. One day. Lori tells a story that the day that the dulcimer arrived, which really became kind of symbolic of every time you saw the dulcimer, you kind of looked around and wondered, well, where's Jim? On that Christmas morning that this was a present, how do you wrap a dulcimer? You can't. So, Lori wrapped the stand. And Jim being Jim, remember, Jim is a 10-year-old man. No matter what age Jim is, he's a 10-year-old boy. He saw the legs, and his mind is running wild. Is it a new fishing pole? What could it be? Is it a broom? He finally unop he opens it, and Lori leads him through to finding the rest of the dulcimer. And in Lori's testimony, which we can all attest, we just have never witnessed it, he was quiet. The surprise was that significant to him. He was still. If you knew him as a younger man, and you could have seen the pictures out there, if you had a life with him, you would have seen a local doppelganger to Jack Black in the School of Rock. Those of you who knew him at church, he was the embodiment of worship here. One Sunday it was drums. One Sunday, it was acoustic. Another Sunday, it was lead guitar. Another Sunday, it was bass guitar. Another Sunday, it was dulcimer again. He, you loved him. You were frustrated by him. You laughed with him. You argued with him. You performed with him. You watched him perform but you never sat quietly with him. You better have a personality like Mr. Wally's if the first instrument you learned to play was the accordion. <laughs> first instrument given to him at four. Now I would imagine if you lived in Minnesota, the land of the polka, an accordion's a cool instrument. The other 49 states, not so cool. So he would begin to develop 
the musicianship that we know him to have. And he would start his adult life as a lead singer in a rock band. Now, family, you got to understand, I would love to see some footage, wouldn't you? Those of you who are blessed today to have seen that character, I would have loved it. I imagine a cross between Malcolm Young of ACDC and Ted Nugent. I can see him standing on a table, flaunting his ability and singing with gusto. But as wanderlust for the stage turned into life in the Rogue Valley, marrying Lori, he pursued a music degree from SOU. Now, what some of us never knew was he had planned a degree in performance. But he said and was told, no, you need to major in something you're already not good at. You need a music education degree. You can be a teacher. And I'm sure many of you heard the quote. I didn't know it until this week. When he proclaimed to the one who gave him the advice, No! I hate kids! (laughs) And it's those kids that would be the joy of the rest of his life. He would teach guitar, choir, orchestra. He coached football and was the voice of the Crater Comets. He loved, as I said, to see you compete whether that be in choir or jazz choir or band or orchestra or football or basketball. He would say this in retirement. He says, I am the most fortunate person in the world to have worked in District 6. I could not have had a better job. How's that for something? And someone who said, I hate kids. He says, I couldn't have had a better job. He finishes, the students and the staff I worked with were not only inspirational to me, but also professional friends that were great people to be around. I truly loved the years I spent at Crater, Scenic, and Hanby. You need to know that here at church, he wanted us to glorify God through song. And as, as Mike asked him a moment ago on the third song that he sang, often, halfway through a song, he would say, Stand up! Stand up! And, you know, when you were frustrated as to know why, because you were comfortable in your seat, he would just simply say, You sing better. You sing better. But never added, just assumed, you would have given glory to God. By standing. He wore t-shirts that revealed his loyalty to the Lord. And if he wasn't wearing a Hawaiian shirt, he often had a propaganda shirt that proclaimed his loyalty to the Lion of Judah. He worked in Awana. And again, one of the most One of the coolest sights you'll ever see is Santa Claus working with second grade kids as he cheered them around the the Awana program throughout the evening. If you're going to enter heaven because you know Christ as Savior, you'll want to be seen serving Him. Jim gave his passion to life. Jim gave his passion for those of us who who, who knew him here. One man said it this way, desire that your life count for something great 
Long for your life to have eternal significance. Want this. Don't coast through life without a passion. You and I all can say a hearty agreement to we're here to honor today a man who breathed passion. Well, I want to uh, thank you for the honor and privilege of being asked to speak today um, about a tremendous, uh, important, and influential part of Jim's life, his work. I met Mr. Wally as a student, and to be clear, the great Mr. Wally or the cute girls in choir could not get me to be in that class. But as a student of Crater High School, I knew Jim Wally he was an amazing personality uh, with a Jerry Garcia kind of look to him, a infectious smile and a contagious laugh, and Hawaiian shirts that sometimes were a little inappropriate. I mean, uh, silhouette of hula girls doesn't go over real well in a room full of adolescent boys. <laughs> but he was a kid magnet. Uh, he could connect with a wide range of students. And I remember even as a student going, there is nothing that he can't talk to someone about, whether it was sports, food, music, art. Jim found a way to talk to kids about what they wanted to talk about. The music room was on the way to the student parking lot. And it was amazing the number of students that would stop just to say hi to him. And of course, Jim was using his lunchtime to work with a student or students, but he would always take time to say hi to those that checked in with him. Later, I got my first teaching job at Scenic, and that's when Mr. Wally became Jim. I taught next to him one year, and that kind of connecting with students also applied to connecting with adults, which meant, having the class next to him, that I would often in my prep period have to cover the first three or four minutes of his class because he was outside talking to anyone, someone in the hallway. But I didn't mind because you couldn't be mad at Jim. He had such a great laugh, he'd apologize, slap you on the back, won't happen again, even though it would. Jim was a great coach and teacher. And he, I had a conversation with him one time that I remember where he said that coaching music students is a lot like coaching athletes. Music students come to the classroom with vulnerability and being afraid to take risks. And he said, it's so important for him to build a relationship, to, to find out where the kids' skills are, to show them where they could go, and motivate, motivate, motivate. And I still think about that in coaching today. Later in my career as the principal of Hamby Middle School, where I am now, I became Jim Wally's boss, and I had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> At the end of Jim's career, I got the privilege of watching him teach, watching his concerts, brainstorming ways to motivate kids. As him and I would talk about kids, Jim would always say, well, put them with me. I can teach them to sing or to play, and that way they'll belong to something. Jim split his time between uh, Hamby and other schools, but he still found a way to connect with Hamby students. He would stand outside of his classroom and connect, get to know every kid that passed by. He would come into my office and say, Ben, seventh grader, what's the story? Put him in my class. And I always would, and Jim would always be the best part of that kid's day. He was not only the voice of the comments, he was also the heart of the comments. His announcing at football and basketball games were filled with excitement. Everybody was ready for us to start popping some pads. He, his great, he would fill his announcing with great sayings and often dad jokes. He knew that family's proudest moment was to hear 
their child's name be called. And I remember one case in a football game where a kid that rarely played got to go out for a couple of plays of, uh, for his for senior night. And sure enough, Jim called his name and his number. And that he would be involved in a tackle, of course, with a shower of comments. And that student ran off the field, ripped his helmet off, and said, somebody needs to tell Mr. Wally, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Jim was larger than life. He was enthusiastic about everything. He was enthusiastic about his family, his faith, and his work. He knew how important a teacher was to a student. He loved everything D6 and everything Crater. So all of his former colleagues, his former students, who I see today, all of District 6 and our community will miss Jim Wally. But we all know that the Angel Choir now has a director. Thank you. Well, we're going to sing another song uh, that Jim loved uh, and taught me uh, over the last couple of years of his life. And I'm not going to ask you to stand, um, but I'm going to do what Jim Wally would often do, and he would ask you to stand from the waist up, if you would. <laughs> King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, my ransomed soul he leadeth. Where the bird and pastures grow, where through celestial feet never failing, ruler of my heart, everlasting, lover of my soul on the mountain high, or in the valley low, the king of love, my shepherd is, the king of love, my shepherd is. Lost and foolish, stop by straight, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. In death's dark veil I fear no ill, with thee, dear Lord, beside me. Thy rod and staff, my comfort still. Thy cross before to guide me. Never failing, ruler of my heart, everlasting. Lover of my soul on the mountain high, or in the valley low. The king of love, my shepherd is. The king of love, my shepherd is.
so do all the length of days. Thy goodness faileth never. Good shepherd, may I sing your praise within your house forever. Within your house forever. One of my favorite things to do was to just sit and chat with Jim Wally. And one of my favorite conversations I had with him um, was when he told me, can you believe little Scotty Dipple's now my boss? <laughs> and then he laughed, he belly laughed, just so you know, Scott. That's what he did. And if you know Jim, you know what a belly laugh is. Um, my name's Dale Bitterling. I'm one of the pastors here, but I have known Jim in a variety of capacities. Uh, we both taught in the Central Point School District for many years before I changed careers and he retired. Uh, he was the voice of the Crater Comets on some of the teams I, I was blessed to help coach. He taught my son um, an eighth grade band at Hamby Middle School where my son played the bassoon, which also made Jim Belly laugh. Uh, I had an opportunity to partner with him on some events with that. Him and I have had the ability to partner on several weddings and more than one memorial service, so it's difficult for me to stand up here for his, as I'm sure it is for you. He was my friend, and I loved to just talk with him. We could talk about deep things of the Bible, or we could talk about Jethro Tull, which he loved. For those of you who don't know who Jethro Tull is, look it up. The greatest capacity of which I knew Jim as a musician, and I've seen him perform in a variety of venues, was right here in this church on this stage leading our people in worship. And in one of my favorite conversations with Jim as he was preparing for retirement, I asked him, do you consider yourself a musician who became a teacher or a teacher who also professionally plays music? He thought for a minute and he said the two were so intricately linked he never really thought of them separately. But after a few moments of thought, he said when he started his teaching career, he thought of himself as a musician who also got to teach. He said at some point, things flipped, and he started thinking of himself as passionate about teaching young people who also got to play music professionally. He said his passion of teaching love of music to kids was really what pushed him and drove him. He said he considered music a gift from God and that God blessed him with an opportunity to share it with young people. He stated the secret to teaching music and the secret to teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ were both the same. He said, you have to keep it simple so people can grab a hold of it. Really understand it to their core and let it take a hold of their life. Don't complicate it. Let people fall in love with it and then grow in their relationship with it. Grow in their relationship with music and grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. So Jim taught many of us many things. And I get to speak on his behalf and share with you the simple message of Jesus Christ that he desperately and passionately wanted you to hear. Jim understood it and embraced it and is with his Lord and Savior today because of it. But Jim wouldn't have been irritated if, and offended if I was long-winded and bogged it down in theology. He would want me to keep it simple and simply let people fall in love with it. You see, Jim knew he was not a perfect man. He had many flaws and his own issues he called sin, and the Lord called sin. By the way, the most frustrating thing about me for Jim was if I sent him an email, I'd have to send him a text that I'd sent him an email. <laughs> and frequently I'd have to call him to tell him I sent him a text to check his email. <laughs> See, Jim knew he could be selfish, he could be self-centered, he could lose his temper, and he knew that this sin kept him from a relationship from, with God. And he knew he could not fix it. When he learned that God had created a way to fix the problem, Jim embraced it. The way that God fixed the problem was to have his son, Jesus Christ, pay the price for Jim's sin so that Jim could be adopted into the family of God. The Bible says it like this in 2 Corinthians. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. But Jim also knew to accept that, re that gift from God required him to commit to Jesus, not just understand it. He had to make him Lord of his life. It did not require Jim to suddenly become perfect or without flaw. It just required him to submit and let Jesus start working on him, in him, and through him. 
My favorite part about talking to Jim about leading worship here at CBC was the gratitude he expressed to this gift given to him. He, not the gift of music, but the gift of salvation. He loved that he could not earn it or purchase it or in any other way ever be deserving of it. It was simply because God loved him and did it for him. The Bible describes it like this in Ephesians chapter 2. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. So let me encourage you today. Do not miss this final teaching opportunity Jim would have wanted to share with you. Don't walk out of here today or at home without making a phone call, without considering this most important lesson. You too, each and every one of us here, will die someday. We too are all separated from God by our sins. We are invited to accept this free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. You too can know the joy and the blessing of being part of God's family and the peace of knowing that it what will happen to you when you die. Please don't let this opportunity pass you by. Join with me in prayer. Father God, we thank you of the gift of the life of Jim Wally. Father, we thank you for the passion that he had for us as his people. We thank you for the passion that he had for you as his Savior. Father, may that last message ring into people's ears today. May they understand what really drove Jim, and that was his relationship with you. Father, we ask that through this sad moment in our lives, may we see things that we can rejoice in as people embrace you as their Savior. And we praise you and we thank you. And everybody said... Amen. We've got one more song for you this morning, and it's one that Jim uh, played several times for me, and we had a couple of conversations. He said, really, this is what I want to be known for. I want this song to be true of me. So as Dale said, don't miss this opportunity to contemplate what this song says, and I believe that it was true uh, for Jim when he passed. I pray that it would also be true for you as you hear it this morning. When it's all been said and done There is just one thing that matters Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and All my treasure will mean nothing Only what I've done for love's reward Will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy so great that you look beyond our weakness and find purest gold in my clay, making sinners into saints I will always sing your praise Here on earth and ever after For you've shown me heaven's my true home When it's all been said and done You're my life when life is gone When it's all been said and done There is just one thing that matters Did I do my best 
to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? Did I live my life for you? pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I thank you that that song was true of Jim. Lord, that he lived his life for you. Lord, and he, he touched all of us in so many ways. Lord, he impacted this community in ways that, that we can't even comprehend today. Lord, and we thank you for the time that we got to spend with him. Lord, for the way that, that we knew him and that he knew us. Lord, but most importantly, Lord, I pray and thank you that he knew you. Lord, and that he, he lived his life to point others to you. So would that be true of us as we go out today? May we consider who you are and what you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen.